I thought it would be useful just to have a quick video run through of this script because it's actually pretty useful. So let me show you what the environment is first. This is a 2012 R2 server and I think it's Link actually rather than Skype. Yes it is. There we go. There's no users enabled on this pool at the moment but what we're going to do is just bulk enable some users using that script. So first off let's find the script that I was talking about. It's under my link scripting folder under link enabled. So that, that's my script in there. Now the users I'm going to enable are all in this file here, enable users. And you'll see that it's a straightforward um, CSV. It's got the account name in there, which we're actually not going to use in this script. Uh, the email address, which is the um, authoritative selector for the users that we're going to work on. The registration pool, which is of course the link pool that we're going to uh, enable the users on. The user SIP address, their conferencing policy, their client policy and external access policy. Okay, now there are some pieces in the Skype enable um, script that you do need to modify for your environment. So if I just edit it quickly, the bits that you want to look at are these ones here. You just need to make sure that they're appropriate for your environment. So for example, um, it's got my default pool, which is link pool. It's got my log file, which I'm going to use there, which is the enable log.txt. And it also defines the use the user CS3s, the file that I'm going to get the users from, the ones that I want to enable from that file there. So you'll see they're all in the directory there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just fire up PowerShell and I'm just going to right click on it and make sure we run it as administrator. There we go, and there's my PowerShell. So I'm going to now go to that directory where my scripts are. It's in link enable, we've now called the script Skype enable, doesn't really matter. So you'll see my um, script is there, Skype enable.ps1. So all I'm going to do is just run that script. It doesn't take very long because I don't have um, many users to actually set up. So you can see that the operation's finished. Please check the logs. The enable log is the main functional log, and there's also a user check.csv. So let's have a quick look back in that folder. There we go. You'll see there's a few more files in there now. We've got the enable log. If I open that up, you'll see that it's got the computer name, who's done the execution, the date and time. It also shows you uh, a run through of what it does to all the users. So for example, there we're enabling test user one at Deathstar. Shows you the link pool, it shows the SIP address, it even shows you the commands that I'm using to actually enable. So if we have a quick look at the commands there, if I just turn word wrap on for a second, what you'll see is actually I'm searching um, the active directory for a user with a certain email address. So I'm enabling on that email address property, and then I'm enabling the user on the right registrar pool with the right SIP address. You'll also see then I go through later and, and uh, apply the client policy, the conferencing policy, uh, and also the external access policy. So yeah, you can have a run through this. It'll show you what the script's doing. You might find it useful just to um, see how it works, really. You'll see down the bottom that it will tell you what log files it's using. Okay, and it also creates this little um, CSV file, which is this one, the user check. Now in there, You'll see that it's got a CSV file. It's for every user. It, it lists the user's SIP address, the pool they're on, and uh, what policies are applied to them. So what you can do is import that to something like Excel, compare it to your your source one, and just make sure the output is what you're expecting. So it's pretty straightforward. Now the other thing I just wanted to show you, uh, if I find my PowerShell again. In fact, if we just have a quick look in the Link Control Panel, you'll see now that all my users are there. If I open one of the users. You should see that my conferencing policy has been applied, my external access policy has been applied, and down the bottom, my client policy is also correct. Okay, now the other thing to consider is what happens if I run this script again? Well, let me show you. So I'm going to go back to PowerShell. I'm just going to do that enable Skype dot, or Skype enable even. You'll see that actually these objects are not now being modified because they're already um, enabled and we're not trying to change anything on, on the object. So you can run the script as many times as you want. 
So the advantage of running the script multiple times is the fact that we can change any of those policies. So for example, if we go into our source users, enable users, and what I'm going to do is just get rid of all these extra users for a second. And I'm going to change our test one user, and I'm going to change all conferencing to no conferencing. Okay, I'm just going to save that file and I'm going to rerun that script. Okay, now that's finished. So we have a look at the log files, the enable log here. You'll see that we're only affected one user now. Okay, so if we pop into the control panel, I'm going to find our test user one. What we should see is no conferencing applied. There you go. So it is a pretty useful script. It doesn't just enable it. It's a great way to be able to go through and modify uh, all those other policies. If you wanted to not affect the other policies, it's also possible to do that. So let me show you what I mean. If I go to our enable users, just going to check quickly the name of that other policy. Bear with me a second. All conferencing facilities. So I'm going to change just our conferencing policy to all conferencing There we go, and I'm going to remove everything else. So I'm not, I don't want to touch external access. And I don't want to touch the client policy. There we go. So let's save that, rerun the script. There we go. And we can check the enable log again. You'll see that um, no client policy to be assigned, no external access policy, but it will go through and do the conferencing. So again, if we pop into the control panel, look at our test user you'll see that it's now got all conferencing facilities. So it's a pretty useful script. I mean, it will go through and modify the main um, policies for you. And actually, if you look at this script layout, if you want to affect other fields and other um, fields, either for Active Directory or, of course, within um, Skype for Business or Link, it's actually pretty straightforward to do, and you should be able to add your own stuff to it.